Uh, we were interested to do this study because of population trends that racial and ethnic minorities are developing diabetes at younger ages and lower weights than whites. And we were interested to do this study to see if these guidelines based on age, 40 to 70, and overweight and obese would miss those high-risk racial and ethnic minority groups. Our study had two main findings. The first was that these screening criteria identified 45% of patients who developed prediabetes or diabetes. The second finding, which was a concerning one, was that the guidelines identify proportionately fewer racial and ethnic minorities than whites. For example, the guidelines identified 54% of whites who developed prediabetes or diabetes, and only 38% of Hispanics or Latinos. So screening for diabetes is important for two reasons. For people who have prediabetes, that gives us an opportunity to offer them programs to prevent diabetes. And for people who are identified as having diabetes, that then gives us an opportunity to treat their diabetes and offer them evidence-based treatments and medications. So that what's concerning about our study findings is that those programs and treatments would be delayed in people who are not identified by the screening guidelines. The Affordable Care Act mandated that services that are recommended by the United States Preventive Services Task Force must be covered by insurers without any costs imposed to patients. And so that's another potentially concerning implication of our study is that for patients who would not be eligible for screening according to the guideline, they may have to pay for those screening tests.